Known as a musical chameleon for his ever-changing appearance and sound, David Bowie was born David Robert Jones in Brixton, South London, England, on January 8, 1947. David showed an interest in music from an early age and began playing the saxophone at age 13. He was greatly influenced by his half-brother Terry, who was nine years older, and exposed David to the worlds of rock music and beat literature. But Terry had his demons and his mental illness, which forced the family to commit him to an institution. This haunted David for a good deal of his life. Terry would commit suicide in 1985, and it would be a tragedy that would become the focal point of Bowie's later song, Jump, they said. After graduating from Bromley Technical High School at 16, David started working as a commercial artist. He also continued to play music, hooking up with a number of bands and leading a group himself called Davy Jones in the Lower Third. Several singles came out of this period, but nothing that gave the young performer the kind of commercial success that he needed. Out of fear of being confused with Davy Jones of the Monkees, David would change his last name to Bowie a name that was inspired by the knife developed by the 19th century American pioneer, Jim Bowie. Eventually, Bowie went out on his own. But after recording an unsuccessful solo album, Bowie would exit the music world for a temporary period. Like so much of his later life, these few years proved to be incredibly experimental for the young artist. For several weeks in 1967, he lived at a Buddhist monastery in Scotland and he would later start his own mime troupe called Feathers. Around this time, he would also meet the American-born Angela Barnett. The two married on March 20th, 1970, and had one son together whom they nicknamed Zoe in 1971, before divorcing in 1980. He is now known by his birth name, Duncan Jones. By early 1969, Bowie had returned full-time to music. He signed a deal with Mercury Records, and that summer he released the single, Space Oddity. Bowie later said the song came to him after seeing Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Oddity. He said, I went stoned out of my mind to see the movie, and it really freaked me out, especially the trip passage. The song quickly resonated with the public, sparked in large part by the BBC's use of the single during its coverage of the Apollo 11 moon landing. The song enjoyed later success in the United States when it was released in 1972 and climbed to number 15 on the charts. Bowie's next album, The Man Who Sold the World, further catapulted him to stardom. The record offered up a heavier rock sound than anything Bowie had done before and included the song, All the Mad Men, about his institutionalized brother, Terry. His next work, 1971's Hunky Dory, featured two hits. The title track that was a tribute to Andy Warhol, The Velvet Underground, and Bob Dylan. And Changes, which came to embody Bowie himself. As Bowie's celebrity profile increased, so did his desire to keep his fans and critics guessing. He claimed he was gay, and then introduced the pop world to Ziggy Stardust, Bowie's imagining of a doomed rock star, and his backup group, The Spiders from Mars. His 1972 album, The Rise and Falls of Ziggy Stardust and The Spiders from Mars, made him a superstar. Dressed in wild costumes that spoke of some kind of wild future, Bowie, portraying Stardust himself, signaled a new age in rock music. One that seemed to officially announce the end of the 1960s and the Woodstock era. But just as quickly as Bowie transformed himself into Stardust, he changed again. He leveraged his celebrity and produced albums for Lou Reed and Iggy Pop. In 1973, he disbanded the Spiders and shelved his Stardust persona. Bowie continued on a similar glam rock style with the album Aladdin Sane which featured the Gene Genie and Let's Spend the Night Together, his collaboration with Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. Around this time, he showed his affection for his early days in the English mod scene and released Pinups, an album filled with cover songs originally recorded by a host of popular bands, including Pretty Things and Pink Floyd. By the mid-1970s, 
Bowie had undergone a full-scale makeover. Gone were the outrageous costumes and garish sets. In two short years, he released the albums David Live and Young Americans. The latter album featured backing vocals by a young Luther Vandross and included the song Fame, co-written by John Lennon and Carlos Alomar, which became Bowie's first American number one single. In 1980, David would now be living in New York. He would release Scary Monsters, which was a much lauded album that featured the single Ashes to Ashes, a sort of updated version of his earlier hit, Space Oddity. Three years later, Bowie would record Let's Dance, an album that contained a bevy of hits such as the title track Modern Love and China Girl, and featured the guitar work of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Of course, Bowie's interest didn't just reside with music. His love of film helped him land the title role in The Man Who Fell to Earth. In 1980, Bowie starred on Broadway in The Elephant Man and was critically acclaimed for his performance. In 1986, he starred as Jared the Goblin King in the fantasy adventure film Labyrinth, directed by Jim Henson and produced by George Lucas. Bowie performed opposite teenage Jennifer Conley and a cast of puppets in the movie, which became a 1980s cult classic. Over the next decade, Bowie bounced back and forth between acting and music, with the latter especially suffering. Outside of a couple of modest hits, Bowie's musical career languished. His side project with musicians Reed Gabriels and Tony and Hunt Sales, known as Tin Machine, released two albums, Tin Machine in 1989 and Tin Machine 2 in 1991, which both proved to be flops. His much-hyped album, Black Tie, White Noise, in 1993, which Bowie described as a wedding gift to his new wife, supermodel Aymont, also struggled to resonate with record buyers. Oddly enough, the most popular Bowie creation of late has been Bowie Bonds. Financial securities, the artist himself backed with royalties from his pre-1990 work. Bowie issued the bonds in 1997 and earned 55 million from the sale. The rights to his back catalog were returned to him when the bonds matured in 2007. In 2004, Bowie received a major health scare when he suffered a heart attack while on stage in Germany. But he would make a full recovery and would go on to work with bands such as Arcade Fire and with the actress Scarlett Johansson on her album Anywhere I Lay My Head, which was a collection of Tom Waits covers. Bowie, who was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1996, was a 2006 recipient of the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. He kept a low profile for several years until the release of his 2013 album, The Next Day, which skyrocketed to number two on the Billboard charts. The following year, Bowie released his greatest hits collection, Nothing Has Changed, which featured a new song entitled Sue. In 2015, he collaborated on Lazarus, an off-Broadway rock musical starring Michael C. Hall which revisited his character from The Man Who Fell to Earth. He released Black Star, his final album, on January 8, 2016, his birthday. New York Times critic John Pirelles noted that it was strange, daring, and ultimately rewarding work with a mood darkened by a bitter awareness of mortality. Only a few days later, the world would learn that the record had been made under difficult circumstances. The music icon died on January 10th, 2016, two days after his 69th birthday. A post on his Facebook page read, David Bowie died peacefully today, surrounded by his family after a courageous 18-month battle with cancer. He was survived by his wife, Iman, his son, Duncan Jones, and daughter, Alexandria, and his stepdaughter, Suleika Haywood. Bowie also left behind an impressive musical legacy, which included 26 albums. His producer and friend, Tony Visconti, wrote on Facebook that his last record, Black Star, was his parting gift. Famed singer, songwriter, and musical innovator, Prince was born Prince Rogers Nelson on June 7, 1958, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. His parents were John Nelson, a musician whose stage name was Prince Rogers, and Maddie Shaw, a jazz singer who performed with the Prince Rogers Band. He became interested in music at a young age and taught himself how to play the piano, guitar, and drums. 
His parents broke up when he was about 10, and he and his sister would split their time between their parents' homes. He would eventually run away and would move in with his neighbors. In high school, Prince formed his first band, Grand Central, which would later become known as Champagne, with Andre Anderson, who would later change his name to Andre Simone, and his friend Morris Day, of Morris Day and the Time. In 1978, Prince was signed to Warner Brothers Records. In a 2009 interview with Tavis Smiley, Prince revealed that when he was a child, he suffered from epileptic seizures and that he was teased in school. He told Smiley, Early in my career, I tried to compensate by being as flashy and as noisy as I could. In 1978, Prince dropped his debut album, For You, which was followed by Prince. He played practically all of the instruments on the albums, and the sophomore release contained his first top 20 hit, the easygoing I Want to Be Your Lover. The critically acclaimed Judy Mind dropped in 1980, consisting of material that was graphic in its exploration of sexuality and fantasy. Controversy continued playing with the themes of its predecessor, as seen with the dance-oriented track, which reached number three on the R&B charts, as well as songs like Sexuality and Do Me Baby. Yet, as Prince continued to develop his career, he would also be known for tracks that had a deep spirituality, with a yearning for majesty and wonder. The singer found international success with the release of his 1982 album, 1999, which included the top 20 title track, an exquisite synth funk ode about the nuclear doomsday, as well as top 10 hints like Little Red Corvette and Delirious. With his band, The Revolution, Prince went on to create the classic album Purple Brain, which also served as a soundtrack to the film of the same name, grossing almost $70 million at the box office. Co-starring Apollonia Cotero and Morris Day, the movie garnered an Academy Award for Best Original Song Score. The melancholy title track Purple Rain reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100, while the hits When Doves Cry and Let's Go Crazy would both reach number one. While Crazy was readily joined with the pantheon of wild, electrifying rock songs, Dove's Cry had a one-of-a-kind signature, displaying an otherworldly meld of electronic and funk elements without a traditional chorus. The soundtrack offered two other hits as well, I Would Die For You and Take Me With You. Prince simultaneously became a well-known visual icon with his trademark curls, flowing jackets, and ruffled attire with punk embellishments. Darling Nikki was another tune from Purple Rain that incited controversy due to its explicit visuals. After Senator Al Gore's wife, Tipper Gore, bought the album for their daughter and listened to the track, she eventually pushed for albums to sport labels specifically geared towards parents' warning of graphic lyrics. 1985 saw the release of Around the World in a Day, which had the top 10 tracks Raspberry Beret and Pop Life. The record continued to feature Prince's penchant for playing a range of musical instruments and desire to impart messages of self-love as seen with Paisley Park. In 1986, Prince released his eighth studio album, Parade, which included his pulsating number one R&B single, Kiss. Parade served as a soundtrack for the artist's second film, Under the Cherry Moon, which he directed and starred in. After disbanding the revolution, Prince was able to consolidate various shelved projects into what would ultimately become the double album, Sign of the Times. The title track would reach number three on the pop charts and number one on the R&B charts. The album would be known for its stark commentary on social issues, yet also contain fun jams like You Got the Look, which was a duet with singer Sheena Easton. He would also go on to pen her R&B hit Sugar Walls on her 1984 album, A Private Heaven. Sign of the Times is easily among Prince's most critically acclaimed albums, yet its sales lagged in the U.S. But the album would find more of an audience in Europe, where the artist would launch a very successful tour. Prince would release Love Sexing in 1988, and he would stir up controversy being nude on the cover of that album. But he would also produce a top five R&B hit, Alphabet Street, from the same album. Now, by the time he released his 11th studio album, which was the soundtrack to Batman in 1989, Prince would become one of America's most commercially successful pop artists, continually making waves on the charts. 
Batman offered up the number one romp, Bat Dance, as well as the top five R&B hit, Party Man. The video for Bat Dance famously featured Prince in a split effect of makeup and costuming meant to symbolize both the film's shadowy hero and his crazed nemesis, the Joker. The early 1990s marked the launch of the new power generation. Prince's latest band that featured a blend of contemporary R&B, hip hop, jazz, and soul, along with the vocals of Rosie Gaines. The group was first called out in the soundtrack to Graffiti Bridge, a 1990 sequel to Purple Rain that didn't fare well at the box office, but yet still yielded the top 10 track, Thieves in the Temple. With the NPG's artistic contribution, Prince found success with his album Diamonds and Pearls, which rose to number three on the Billboard 200 album chart. Diamonds included the romantic title ballad, the industrial strength Get Off, and the playful peon Insatiable and the saucy number one single Cream. Prince's work with the NPG continued to unashamedly toy with ideas around sexuality, gender norms, and the body. To promote the album, Prince had appeared on the 1991 MTV Music Video Awards to do a live performance of Get Off. Echoing parts of the track's music video, the performance featured an array of dancers and musicians in an on-stage orgy, with the artist famously turning around towards the end of the song to show off his seatless pants. In the fall of 1992, Prince had signed a record $100 million deal with Warner Brothers, which was considered the largest recording and music publishing contract in history. At the time, this allowed him the freedom to pursue television, film, book, and merchandising deals separately. As a comparison, fellow music giants such as Michael Jackson and Madonna had 60 million plus contracts that were all inclusive. Provocative performances aside, Prince had well established himself as an in-demand collaborator and behind-the-scenes player whose songs would be remade by other artists. In the mid-80s, Shaka Khan would release a highly successful cover of his 1979 tune, I Feel For You, while Sinead O'Connor's biggest hit was Prince's Nothing Compares To You. The Art of Noise and Tom Jones would reach the UK Top 5 in 1988 with the remake of Kiss. And Alicia Keys covered How Come You Don't Call Me Anymore on her own 2001 debut. Prince also worked on specific album tracks for performers like Khan, Madonna, Tevin Campbell, Kate Bush, The Time, Martika, Patti LaBelle, and Janelle Monet. He was behind the girl group Vanity Six, led by singer-actress Vanity, and their number one dance hit, Nasty Girl. And he sent a song to the all-women's band, The Bangles, that they could record to great effect, having a number two hit with a lush ode to a stressful birthday called Manic Monday. In 1992, Prince and the New Power Generation released Love Symbol Album. Though embraced by some critics, sales did not fare as well as Diamonds. Love only managed to have one top 10 hit, the transcendent single Seven. Though My Name is Prince and the carnal sexy motherfucker gained some attention as well. The following year, Prince released the compilation box set, The Hits and the B-Sides, which had an array of popular songs as well as a newly released Pink Cashmere, which was a tender number sung in falsetto. The lack of success for Love Symbol album created tension between Prince and his record label Warner Brothers. Over the ensuing years, the singer's career went through a roller coaster of ups and downs. Turned off by feeling controlled by his label, Prince changed his name to the unpronounceable Glyph in 1993, a fusion of female and male astrological symbols which he used until 2000. During that time, he was more frequently referred to as the artist formerly known as Prince, and his new symbol was not embraced by most fans. He also started making appearance with the word slave drawn on the side of his face, meant to convey the great disdain he had for his label. Prince did release the 1995 album, The Gold Experience, during his time of duress, and scored another top five song with The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. Once he was released from all contractual obligations from Warner Brothers, Prince released the triple album fittingly entitled Emancipation, which went on to become certified platinum and featured the sole remake of Betcha by Golly Wow. Several other albums affiliated with this MPG label soon followed, including Crystal Ball and Rave Unto the Joy Fantastic. After several years of relative obscurity, Prince returned to the limelight in 2004 to perform at the Grammy Awards with Beyonce Knowles, the same year he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 
That spring, he released Musicology, with a tour that became the top concert draw in the United States. The album won two Grammys and added another dreamy ballad, Call My Name, to the Prince canon. His next album, 3121, was released in 2006. That year, he wrote and performed Song of the Heart for the animated film Happy Feet and won a Golden Globe for Best Original Song for the composition. In 2007, he performed at the Super Bowl halftime show on a massive stage shaped as his famous symbol, Among Pouring Rain. The event was watched by over 140 million fans. 2010 was a year of accolades for Prince. He was not only lauded by Billboard.com as the greatest Super Bowl performer ever, but was also featured in Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World and earned a Lifetime Achievement Award from the BET Awards. He ended the year with an induction in the Grammy Hall of Fame. Prince also continued to release albums as seen with Planet Earth, Lotus Flower, and in a joint deal with The Daily Mirror 2010. With the advent of the internet as the primary force for distributing music, Prince was against the trend of having songs shared at will on the web. He rallied against the idea of providing his songs online to music platforms without proper upfront compensation and profit sharing. With his tracks eventually only found on the Jay-Z backed streaming service title, one of the few pop artists to have full ownership of his masters, he was diligent via web sheriff in erasing examples of his music, including videos and live performances from the internet. He was thus behind the Lens vs. Universal Music Group case, which unsuccessfully pushed for the YouTube removal of a baby dancing to Let's Go Crazy. Prince was extremely private about his personal life, and he preferred to spend time at his Paisley Park compound, away from the celebrity spotlight. In the 1980s, Prince had a long off and on relationship with singer-songwriter Susanna Melvoin, the twin sister of Wendy Melvoin, who was a guitarist in Prince's band The Revolution. He was also romantically involved with drummer extraordinaire Sheila E. The two worked together on her album, The Glamorous Life, featuring the top 10 R&B title track and Romance 1600, showcasing the single A Love Bazaar. On Valentine's Day 1996, Prince would marry backup singer and dancer Maite Garcia. The couple had a son who was born on October 16, 1996 and died a week later from Pfeiffer Syndrome, a rare genetic disorder. Prince and Garcia's marriage was annulled in 1999, and they were divorced in 2000. In 2001, Prince married his second wife, Manuela Testolini, who had been employed by one of his charitable organizations. Their marriage ended in 2006. After their divorce, he had a relationship with one of his musical prodigies, singer Bria Valente. In March 2016, it was announced that the pop superstar was working on a memoir tentatively entitled The Beautiful Ones. It was scheduled for a fall 2017 release. According to Billboard magazine, Prince spoke to an audience at a music industry event about the memoir. This is my first book. My brother Dan is helping me with it. He's a good critic and that's what I need. He's not a yes man and he's really helping me get through this. We're starting from the beginning of my first memory and hopefully we can go all the way to the Super Bowl. On April 21st, 2016, Prince was found dead at his Paisley Park compound in Minnesota. The week prior, his plane made an emergency landing and the singer was hospitalized for what was purportedly a severe case of the flu. Early reports by TMZ, though, state that the musician was actually given a life-saving safe shot for a Percocet overdose. The Carver County Sheriff's Department and Midway's Medical Examiner's Office have launched an investigation into the cause of death. After the autopsy was performed, his remains were cremated and his close family and friends gathered for a small, private funeral on April 23rd. 